Hello, I'm Bood, and welcome to episode two of the Bologna FC 1909 rebuild. As always, thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate it, especially when you come back for a second episode. I also appreciate any thumbs up and comments because that helps get my videos out there. YouTube used to like me. I had a period where it seemed to like me and it pushed my videos. At the minute, I feel like it's forgotten who I am. So if you really enjoy what I do and you like me, like I like you, you can always help me out. Cheeky thumbs up. Have a chat in the comments. Let me know what you think. Again, let me know what you're up to on FM22, especially the beta. What are you looking forward to if you haven't got the game yet? All that good stuff. Right. Season 2 with Bologna. And last year we did really well. <laughs> Great finish in the league. I wasn't happy with a lot of the squad. I also didn't have much money. But it is so surprising what you can do when you don't have much money. And I kind of prefer it sometimes. It's more of a challenge. It's, it's harder work. Because, you know, you have to troll through loads more players. But I think I've done some freaking good business, really. And I'm pretty happy with the team I've got. And I think it's a better team than last year. So let's get into it and have a look. So we're going to jump in on the 31st of August. Things are already underway. But I wanted to get to a point where I had everything in place. Players out and players in. Now, we've got 18 million in the bank, which is great. As you can see, I've got nothing to spend. And I am overspending on the wages. But I'm okay with that. You do get quite good ish TV money in Italy. Italy. I think it's about 30 million for the season. Um, and I spent about 14.75. I recouped 15. Quite a few players have gone, but I've got tons to get through, as you know, whole season in an episode. So I don't want to waste time going through loads of stuff. I want to show you my whole squad, but I will share with you some of the key players that left. First up is the goalkeeper, but in last year, he's good on paper, I think. Just kept on getting injured. Um, we've got about 3 million for him. Marco the Psycho has left. Got 3.9 million from him. He's gone to Zenit. So, you know, they're a good club. I already scored a goal for them. I didn't want him. He knew I didn't want him. And I was really glad to not only get rid of him, but get him off the wage bill. And that's another thing. I think I've got a lot of players off that wage bill and I was able to mix up the finances a bit. Our biggest sale was Roberto Soriano. 5 million we got for him. He's gone to Milan. Um, big, good player. Maybe surprising. He's 31 though. Um, but I couldn't turn that money down and I felt like I'd found other players that could be placing. Let's do this quick. Come on, let's speed this up, Bood. Jerde, uh, I got three point something million for. Gabriel Corbo, I got 1.8, I think I got for him. Nicola, I got about a million for. Um, and again, there's a couple of other players, some from the B team, who I got 500 grand, 600 grand for. We lost two good players, old players though. Um, the right back and the centre half, I showed you in the last episode. They went out on a free. So, you know, I had this red bear squad and at this point I'm thinking, I don't know what tactic I'm going to do. Can I stick with what I've got? I love the way I play. Uh, I love that tactic. I want to make it work. But it depends on what players you can find. So let's go through this squad, starting with the goalkeepers. And this is my backup, Francesco Bardi. Okay, backup. We've got a new goalkeeper. A goalkeeper I quite like the look of, mainly because he's got a couple of caps for Italy. So he's got some international experience. It cost me next to nothing. A couple of million. And, you know, he's been at his last club for a long, long time. But he's a great keeper. I did actually buy another keeper. I'm going to show him you maybe next year because I think I couldn't turn it down. He's from Argentina, but obviously you've got the EU quota. You can only sign so many per season. So he's going to go out on loan, hopefully, and might be number one next year. But this year, it's all about this dude. At right back, we'll start with the backup, and it is Mbaye, 27 years old. Decent little player, but I found a good one, I think. A bit older than I normally would sign, but I like this guy. Thomas Mounier. Belgian, 30, 1 million quid from Borussia Dortmund. Now, this is one of them. He's a, he was transfer listed where they want like three or four for him. And I'm just going in with dead low bids and starting at the real rock bottom price, being cheeky. And more often than not, you can get away with it. I don't know if this is going to last uh, once the full game's out. But 1 million quid, I think he's good. At left back, there's no change. We've got Mitchell. Uh, he's going to be the backup. And we've still got this wee young man, Aaron Hickey. 20 years old, bags and bags and bags of potential. People have told me on other series, other saves, other games, he's gone on to great things. So yeah, we want to keep hold of him. At centre half, we've got Arthur. We had him last year on loan and the transfer was already in place. Um, and he did a decent job for me last year, so he's now my player. We've loaned a young lad, 22-year-old Perez um, from Atletico Madrid for the season. We've still got our Kev. Kev was class last year. I thought he did a really, really good job for me. Better than what his attributes say he should do. And then on a free sign from Stuttgart, we've got Mark Oliver Kemp, 27 years old, decent looking centre half of nothing. In the centre, this is where it's important, isn't it? I've got them three players in the middle. 
and so it is important and i didn't know what i'd be able to do but we've kept matthias svanberg get some interest during this season because he is a good player we've got nicola fagioli uh two and a half million from juventus they've shipped him out here there and everywhere on loan and uh, now they don't want him but we did zakira zakira oh dennis when you play like that i have got him on my brentford beta i know but he wasn't available at the same time he didn't want to sign for us like he signed early with me at brentford i know he's a tidy player he came up towards the end probably got to the point where he thought shit nobody wants me well but booed he's the only man who loves me and i do love him so we've signed him another late free bit of one i am buzzing with because i think jamie siowani bloody hell i'd love to know what he's really called uh, 25 years old and a ton of interest came up again late like dennis um I, I didn't see him on any of my earlier searches of players that were interested on freeze coming to end the contract and he, he did have interest from good teams around europe bigger teams and those teams in europe so i didn't think he'd go through but he did happy days we've reloaded this lad because he's a good solid player does well for me at brentford i think he'll do well again here uh, and again the low market wasn't awesome i was hoping it'd be a little bit better but you know we're a mid-level italian team we've got no european football so yeah we, we've took him back we've still got nicholas dominguez again good player tidy player good all-around midfielder to be fair um, i think he wants to play a bit more i'll have to wait and see what happens mate signed from bayern for just under half a million they've been shipping him out alone the last couple of years it's adrian fenn 23 year old german i love a german and yeah, they're my central midfielders. On the left, we've got no change. Uh, we've still got Emmanuel Vignato, and some of you mentioned it in the comments, and I know this from other saves I've played in all the games. He used to become a really good player, so hopefully he can become a good player for us. And we've still got Musa Barrow, cracking player, only 23 years old. This squad's, the age of this squad's starting to get more around what I want. Good young squad, hungry squad. On the right, still got Ricardo Orsolini. Again, another good all-round player that did really well for me last year. Got a new guy, though, who can play on both wings. Benjamin Gary. Love that. 22 years old from Racing Club. He used to play for City, I think. I was at City once upon a time. 2.1 million. Cheap as chips. Up top, we've got a new boy. Joshua Serki, who on older games used to be a bit of a wonder kid. I've seen him become amazing. I don't, I don't know if he's took a step back, maybe. Um, didn't cost me it cost me less than a million quid i think about 700 grand eventually in like a broken down deal so quite surprised really because it used to be good so hopefully he's still got something in the tank signed on a free last year we've got sydney van hoydonk i uh, love that name uh, 22 years old played 20 odd games for me last year didn't score many you know he's, he's gonna be a backup striker i want three strikers but obviously the two i've shown you they're not gonna take us on to the next level so what i did and i know about this kid anyway I went to Sevilla B and just thought, who was the highest goal scorer in Sevilla B? Saw this lad. He's our biggest per chase, close to 10 million eventually, which is a bargain because I think he could be a beast. And if you watch my Palermo rebuild, one of my favourite all-time rebuilds, I loved it. You'll remember him from there. Um, but he's left Palermo, went to Pisa and bagged 21 goals in 36 games. So I'm doing a bit of a Brentford looking in the lower league, seeing who's got the good stats, who's got, who's performing. And if he can boss a Serie B, there's no reason why he can't score goals for us in Serie A. So of course the club just wants to get mid-table in the league and third round of the Italian Cup. The Italian Cup, we'll see what happens with that. We'll see. <laughs> Probably beat him a lot of the early stuff. We'll see. Because it's all about that league. I'd like to keep punching. I want to kick on. I think I've got a good team now. They're no world stars. But we've got some good young players, some good solid players. If I can get them to gel, and I'm sticking with the tactic because I'm going for it, I'm pushing it, I'm being freaking determined with it. I believe it could get us into Europe. Staff was going to get some improvement. I lost some um, and I replaced some, but it's not as good. But I'm going to have a little jig when I can get some more spaces. I might show you that later on in the year. You can see I've already added more scouts and more physios this summer. Uh, and we're also improving the training facilities. So yeah, let's just get this club growing. I really want to push them on. I mean, the facilities were good as it was, but I really want to kick on it, me. I just want to pop over to the rules because I do know this. I just forget sometimes, especially when I'm in the heat of the moment filming. But in the last episode, we went from 10th to 9th. And goal difference wise, we shouldn't have. No one's mentioned it. So I don't know if you realised. But I kind of knew. I remember this from a personal save from a mate of mine a long time ago. Um, it's not goal difference first. It's results between teams. So I think it was Sassuolo, was it? We jumped them. So well, it must have been because we did better head to head with them. So that's why we went above even though our goal difference one is better. But the Bookies have still got us as a mid-range team, which is perfectly fine. Got us sitting in 10th. Um, what did we finish last year? 9th. 
<laughs> so that's good. I'm all, I'm all right with that because you, you we've got a lot of new players. I think 12, 12 main players left. About fourteen have come in, with a couple of guys getting promoted as well. Really from the youth team. So you don't know how it's going to work out, especially because I'm being a stubborn bastard and sticking with me Gengen Press. Some people hate the Gengen Press. I freaking love the Gengen Press. So because I wanted to get all the deals in place. I've played some games, I've played seven games at this point in the league, and we're sitting in fifth, won four, drawn two, lost one on 14 points. Pre-season was brilliant as well. Uh, we didn't play any huge teams, um, but to get through it and win every game just gives you that confidence. It feels like you're on the right track. Hopefully the players all start gelling better because they're winning, get that winning mentality. We didn't take that straight into the start of the season, but Napoli have a good, good team, and we drew 1-1 with them. Beat Fiorentina, which is brilliant. Beat them 3-1. Beat Genoa. Drew with Inter, we got battered off Lazio, and then good old Zebra slash Juventus, we beat 2 0. And of course, we kicked off the Italian Cup, only one round so far, and uh, B teamed it. That's the B team I was thinking about at the minute, guys who weren't playing as much. But you know, I, I loved some of them names. I still think it was good. I mean, we didn't play the biggest team, and we had to go all the way into extra time to push it through. But wins a win, and we're still in it. Now, jump forward all the way to the 5th of January and we're still in 5th played 14 won 9 drawn 4 still only lost 1 on 31 points only 4 points off the top so yeah I'm pretty happy with that I don't think you can complain with it really team really had started to gel to be fair and these are the results so I've highlighted the last game I showed you against Juventus we're in a great run here some good, you know, good games let a couple of goals in there beat Atalanta 1-0 that's good to see um, Parma beat them 2-1 beat um, Sampdoria Milan draw me with Roma draw me with I don't think that's anything to be embarrassed about and Lorenzo Luca what a little player he is now at this point we've also played the second round of the Italian Cup but it's a bit weird because it was in, on the 13th of December just had the World Cup the Winter World Cup so we had nearly two months off something that felt like two months and then there's going to be like a winter break so there's going to be another big gap as well before football kicked off again so it's just this one game in the wilderness of nowhere so i just wanted to give my boys my main guys a game and we did although i mean stat wise they, they gave us they tried their freaking best but we did beat them four 0 so the score line was quality and if you're wondering who won the winter world cup well it was denmark of course the old football manager never changes with its complete randomness be nice to see though wouldn't it in real life so yeah quickly you can just see there look we played roma at the end of october november december hardly anything and we had that one game that's why I played an A team just to give them a run out um, and then you got pretty much the rest of the month off until the 5th finances are a struggle I know we've got the TV money coming in we ain't got the biggest wage bill I know we're overspending but it's still not the biggest wage bill I'm gambling and hopefully getting into Europe I think that's what we need because I don't want to sell anyone there might be a couple of there's going to be a couple of players going end of the year but players I don't really want I don't I don't want to have to lose anyone big time I want to keep a team together a young team and grow it that's the whole point isn't it um, so I'm not banking on selling anyone I'm not banking on the board giving me anything so you know we need some European money really this is a squad at the halfway point arranged by average rating and good old Lorenzo Luca can score I think in the Serie A pretty much a goal every other game he plays um, Barrow still been fantastic Hoy Donk's not played much but when he has he's done a job uh, Svanberg he's now wanted by Juve you can piss off um, I think he's done really well Arthur now he's our player I think he's kicked on a gear which is really really good and I mean Jamie's good I know he's not on over 7 he's been a fantastic player on a free and just as a squad I just think they're all getting better and so is my staff Added a couple more slots to the coaching team. Um, still a few things I could tweak. I'll get a performance analyst in at some point if I want. But I think that helps us massively. It's such a good coaching team. So there's another reason why the money also went down. And that's because the club are willing to not put any in, but to spend what they do have in the bank on it. Now, the training facilities, as you know, were in the process of getting upgraded. That finished in December, I think. And straight away, we're uh, improving them again. And the youth. What else I'm really happy with is my youth intake again. It's even better than last year. I've got a couple of really top, top talents. Another top talent. Loads of good talents. I've offered them all contracts. Why not? Let's flesh out that youth team. What else was fantastic was at this point, 2nd of April, we're in a Champions League spot. Okay, only just, but I mean, look at that. We're not too far off the top here. I mean, this league ain't what it used to be. And these big teams have got more money and they have 
a lot more individual quality. But I think I've got a really good all-round squad, and the fact that I put it together with a blue tack and an old shoe and a stick and about 10 pence, I love that. I love that when you do something like this. It just you can't wait to play it, can't wait to click that space bar. Really, really enjoying it. I've lost five now, drawn five, 118. And to be fair, we could have been pushing, really. We had a bad patch. You're going to have a bad patch, I think. Unless you're in a real elite team, you're going to have bad patches. So this was the start of the year against Torino. We beat them 2-0. Beat Sassuolo 3-0. Beat Salernitana. Good old favourite team of mine, 3-1. Great. Then we drew. Then we beat Udinese. Then we got beat off Napoli, right? Beat Genoa. And then it was this. Getting beat off them. Getting beat off Lazio, fair enough. But they tanked us. Inter stuck a low past us. I beat Juventus again. It was shit on here. It's like real life. They're a bit average, to be fair. But luckily, we've bounced back from that Juve one and got three victories on the bounce. Now, Atalanta, great victory. Great game. At Atalanta. Um, <laughs> anyway, got loads of games left to play. Um, majority of them on TV. So you never know. We, If we can carry on like that, could we, we could finish in the top four. But I, I believe we will get European football. Now, on to the Italian Cup third round. We've got Roma away. I wasn't expecting anything great. And they pounded us for most of that game, but we got an early goal. Then Barrow got us another one, and I'm like, we don't kind of deserve that. They did manage to score in the 91st minute. How they didn't win, I don't know, and I, I, just, I don't care. Next, it was Derby Day, and away again. So, you know, it's, it's tough, this. A Derby away in the cup. Uh, you know, they, they had the edge on us again. They scored in the first minute. We had a goal disallowed, then we got Luca. Boom, boom, with two goals. They scored again. Then Luca with the winner in the 75th minute, becoming an instant hero. Now, semi finals, two legs. First leg, draw 2 2. Now, obviously, I save, I play a season, I save it at points, jump back in to film it, and then we get to the end of the season. So, obviously, I, feel, I saved it at this point because of the youth intake. Because it's in April now. It used to be in March, didn't it? It's in April now, most of them. Most of them. It's in April in England, anyway. Um, so, we've still got the second leg to play. Now, I've jumped forward a month. We've um, got about four games left to play in the league. And, you know, we've suffered a little bit. We're currently in six, just behind Atalanta, who are a point ahead of us. Although we've had their number this year. So, you know, Champions League slowly slipping away. But I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I didn't expect Champions League with the squad he had. Even though I believe in this squad, to be fair. Um, any European football will, will do me. What was nice was this. Luca getting us a goal. They came back into it with the Mertens. And... Um, 1-1, one, one, one and away goals. Now, something I don't know yet. Haven't they changed the rules in Europe being football for away goals? Haven't they scrapped it? Has that been implemented on Football Manager? I don't know, because obviously I'm playing two saves. Um, I've got in Europe with Brentford, but up until the last thing you might have seen, I've only done the group stages, so I don't know yet. And of course, I've hinted at it a few times, but I kept saying, Atalanta, um, because we've got them. In the cup final, this is my first chance at silverware on FM22. Oh, I can't lie, I've been working this morning. Can't wait to get on. Because it's my first cup final. So I've reversed the dates of everything here. And you can see we've, we've had a bit of luck in the cup, but we've done really well. I think we deserve to be in that final. Play some good football, to be fair. They're the four games I've got left. I mean, I'm going to scrap Milan. I always chalk something like that down, as we probably will get beat. Udinese will be tough. The next two league games, I think we can win. So I think we can get European football. If we win the cup, though, we're guaranteed European football, aren't we? Welcome to the Olimpico here in Rome. And yeah, I cannot wait for this. Atalanta. We've had their number in the league, but obviously a good team because they're above us in the league, aren't they? So anything can happen in a cup final. Usually cup finals are a bit shit. Now, I know a lot of guys out there, people I follow on Twitter and people I know, they're all playing big saves. A lot of people do that. I used to do that, you know, whenever I've got a new game before I came on YouTube, it was always United first. I'd always go around a few big clubs first and spend loads of money and have some fun before I challenge myself. But doing YouTube, I've, and especially stuff like The Journey, man, I've really come to appreciate lower league saves or mid-level team saves where you can... Oh! Aaron Hickey! Go on, me lad! Playing bagpipes for that bad boy. Having some of that! Come on! Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I like, teams like this where you can... You know, I made a lot of changes to this team. Is what? New goal. One, two, three, four, five, six players in that starting 11 that I brought in. And the majority of it, my money was spent on Luke. You know, picks up some frees, couple of guys here and there. Just basically checking players who were transfer listed. Going back to that free list, because honestly, at the start of the year, there might be players who aren't interested. But as the year's progressing, no one's showing them interest. They'll start to appear on your interested list. So... 
you know, always keep checking, keep ta keeping tabs on it, really. He's not giving a penalty or something for that, is he? No, did he get his foot on it? Give a corner. Yeah, it was a corner. I don't know why sometimes. When it stops and slows down, you, you worry, don't you? Oh, what a save! Italy's number one. How's he only got two caps? Italy's number one. But yeah, Atalanta putting on the pressure, wearing red. Very strange seeing them in red, isn't it? Finds Munier. 30 year old, I never normally buy guys that age, but I thought for 1 million he's a good player, you know, and I need a right back, here's Dominguez! So over the course of the year, I'm going to be trying to promote my mate's mental health charity again, I did it all through FM21, um, and halfway through FM21, go, what happened there? Referee blows his whistle, checking penalty review, just give it ref, penalty awarded, come on, right, come on, come on lad, beautiful, beautiful, feel that trophy right now, come on! Yeah, so they put Evolving Mindset on the banners, you might have noticed it. If you're a sub of mine long time, you'll know about that. They put it straight in FM22. I've seen it. A few others have seen it. Keep your eye out for it. But it's half time. 2 0. Penalty in a freaking worldie from Aaron Hickey. Can we win the Italian Cup? But yeah, I've had a good few days off. Um, apart from Saturday night, I went to Blackpool for the illuminations of all my family. It was a great night, to be fair. It's like a light pill festival as well. Did a lot of walking, but the kids loved it. I had fish and chips. Um, brilliant. Aaron Hickey again? <gasps> It's only his third goal of the season, two of them in the cup final, and they were absolute worldies. And I spent a good day with my son, oh, Luca. Once Luca off, I'll wait a bit for that. I've just been playing football manager. Wife's been out, kids have been at grandma's and nana's, and I've just been annihilating this game. Both saves, flying through it, loving every freaking second. Right, I'm going to have to make some changes. My assistant's telling me players are knackered. Players are knackered. Do I want to bring them off? I don't know. Sometimes I listen to him, sometimes I don't. Also why I'm here, I'm going to talk about my next Brentford episode. Um, and it, Zealand, biggest FM YouTuber there is, he's brought out a bit of a controversial video where he thinks football managers should stop making the game and they should make it a subscription service. I don't agree with him. I think he's dropped a ball with that one. And you can tell because he not, don't get many dislikes. And I, I watched his video and I was like, bloody hell. Went through his comments. People abusing him for it. Like, get a life, you sad bastards. You know, you can have an opinion. You don't have to give the guy grief. I mean, Loki's done like a counter video where he's told, he, he he spoke really well about it. He didn't slag him off or anything. He just said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think that model works. I don't think it'd work for Football Manager. I just want to buy the game every year, even if you only get one new feature and it's just an updated database. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, but I also don't like the fact that he's, if, I feel like he's had a lot of abuse hurled at him for it. People's calling him all sorts in them comments. And I mean, I get a lot of grief. Not, not as much as someone as big as that does. But, you know, I, I do get people randomly abusing me in comments because, you know, little keyboard worries, aren't they? I'm six foot three Mancunian. I can guarantee you not one of them would say that to my face. <laughs> not one. I promise you that. Um, but anyway, red card. Oh, it's all coming to pieces, isn't it? It's coming to pieces for him. But I don't care. I don't care. Sorry, Atalanta. Sorry. And actually, got them in Champions League United, haven't we? Well, there you go. My first trophy of FM22, kind of unexpected, because you know, I'd started this season not knowing what the hell was gonna happen. Kept faith in my tactic, yeah, I don't think it's let me down. I love it. And um, I love these players, I think we can build some here. I hope this is the first of many this year, I'm sure I'll win a few more <laughs> trophies as the uh, year goes on, but yeah, this is special. And you were here to witness it. So that's our first Italian Cup since 1974. Wow, they'd be party galore in the streets wouldn't they if that was real life uh, this is a squad arrangement by average rating have a quick look at it have a pause if you want to see who's doing the business but look at Lorenzo Luca what a little striker he is um, now I've got four games left to play so I'm going to play them now off camera I'm going to go make a coffee because <laughs> I'm gasping for the brew uh, and I'll see you when I'm finished so I'm all brewed up and I've played my last four games and we dropped a ball with this one this didn't help us out one bit but we bounced back against one of my old teams from an old series beating Salonatana 3-1. Now all I can say is sometimes things are beautiful and it's lucky that I'd already drank my brew in the other games because I might have spat it out with this result. Just soak that in. Went to the last game against Udinese um, sitting in fourth um, because obviously we got a better game against Atalanta and they were doing well and we went a goal down and we dropped down. Then we equalised and then we just kicked on Lucas, scored us two goals and secured us Champions League football. That is freaking amazing, right? Amazing. Now, there was them points, it was, we were switching with Atlanta and there was points where we were both on 78 points because they were winning 2-0. Obviously, we went 1-0 down and we came back into it, obviously. 
Um, but Brescia scored two goals, one in the 67th minute, and then they got an equaliser in the 90th minute. So obviously we got we were two points ahead of them, but we'd have been ahead of them anyway, even though our goal difference is less because of the games against, because we beat them twice in the league. And of course, we beat them in a cup final. Um, I voted player of the season for Tammy Abraham because he... 35 goals is absolutely outstanding. Uh, Diaz probably win it because of his average rating, but I went for Tammy. Now, I really have run out of time. I would love to jump forward and show you a few other things, but I can't, especially finances, because I imagine now we might get a good boost. I mean, Champions League money. I'm going to have to qualify, I think, but I don't give a shit. This is brilliant. This, this year, this season has given me a lot of pleasure. And forget about what you heard about it being an, a replicant of FM21. It's still a fantastic game to play. And when... When things start doing this, uh, I, I never get bored of it and I've, I've honestly enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And you're going to come back for episode three because it could be a right cracker. Well, there we go. What a season. Some fantastic results. Cup final win. We're in the Champions League. This club is growing. Facilities, everything. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but thank you for watching. Honestly, do me a favour. Hit that thumbs up. Get involved in the comments. I'd love to have a good chat with you and know what you think, know what you're up to. Um, but yeah, real been a real pleasure and I cannot wait. Seriously, cannot wait to get cracking with this but my schedule is all about Brentford got to get that season finished off tonight um, so I can get that out in a few days and I'll just get pounding this pounding it season 3 can't wait so thank you as always I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch me I know we're all busy people so it's a real joy honestly to have you guys watch me um, I do appreciate it so thank you very much stay happy stay safe and booed bye bye